So guys, I took the truck for a ride. Our V looks a little low right here, so I don't know if our mass airflow sensor is a little skewed. And then when I went when I go into the fuel trims, you can see it starts adding a lot of fuel up here and it's subtracting a bunch down here on both banks. So I think we might have a skewed mass airflow sensor. So I'm gonna try cleaning it. And then I'll take it for another drive. Also, I don't think all the monitors are set either, so our fuel trims could be skewed a little bit. Let's see. Yeah. Let's go into our mode six. I think it ran a bunch of tests already. We have no misfires, so that's good. Didn't log any. Okay, so it didn't run too many. But we don't have a lot. This is all oxygen sensors, and then this is EGR, which I guess, I think it ran the EGR. But then our EVAP, it didn't run yet. So I'm gonna shut it off, let it cool down a little bit, clean the mass airflow sensor, and then we'll take it back out. Okay guys, so I cleaned the mass airflow sensor, and this is what our fuel trims look like. You can see how they're pretty much all like 10% on average or higher. You'd probably say like around 11 or 12% average when you add up all the cells that are near them, except for way down here. So and it's on both banks. They're both kind of even. Uh, bank two is slightly higher, but not by much. And then I did a volumetric efficiency. This is after I cleaned the mass airflow sensor and you can still see it's not perfect. But I've seen them be like that close. Like everybody says that they're supposed to be identical, but I haven't had one that's like dead on to where you can't see a difference. So it could, this could also be slightly off of my air temperature. I didn't know what the temperature was. I put, I think 59 degrees. I think it's around that outside. And then here's our V versus fuel trim calculation. I don't really know how to use this chart too much. I haven't I haven't looked into this one too much, but it's a test you can run after you do the other two. But I think what we're seeing here is I'm wondering if our map sensor might be off. So I'm gonna compare the map sensor to scan data. Like I'm gonna use a manual gauge. See if it might be off and that might be trimming this up. Because if we took like 10% out or so out of all these or even like 15%, we'd be like dead on. Uh, let's see, can we see what our map sensor is right now at idle? I don't know what it's supposed to be on these. I think these have a map sensor. If they don't have a map sensor, then I'm completely wrong. I'll have to look see if it even has a map sensor. Oh, here it is, map sensor. Right now we're at 10. Pretty much dead on 10. Let's go to graph. Let's bring up a map. Oh, there's our vacuum. Let's see. There you go. We're at 10 dead on. So I'm going to get a gauge. I'm going to hook it up. We'll see exactly what it is and we'll compare it. So guys, I did some research with the truck and Right now, if you look at our grants per second, I'm using the Snap-on tool. You'll see we're at 4.79, and our grants per second, I think, is a little low. I think we should probably be around like five or so, and I think that's why we're adding, I think we're adding like 10% fuel. There's our short-term seven, and 10 on the other bank. Okay, so they're both around 10 right now. Oh, actually 13, because I, I didn't see the long-term added in there. But I think our mass airflow sensor is really low. I looked it up and we don't have a map. Yeah, see right now, because on average it should be around the engine displacement at idle. So if it's a 4.6 liter, which this is, it should be around 4.6 at 500 RPMs. And we're at just under 700 RPMs. And we're already under that. So I think we're under reporting. So there's more air going into the motor than what it sees. And that's why our trims are off. So I'm gonna let this warm up, we'll check it again, and then we'll go from there.
but I'm pretty sure that's what our issue is. Let's see. There's our cylinder head temperature. And where's our... We should have an uh, engine coolant temperature sensor, I think. We may not actually have one. We might just have the cylinder head temperature. I thought there was two temperature sensors on here. Guess not. So I'll just let this keep warming up. And we'll check it again once it's warmed up. Okay guys, so it's been running for probably like 20 minutes. I was checking the trans fluid, but you can see we're at 3.78 grams per second right there. We should be around like 4.6. So I think that's what's skewing everything. Our barrel still looks good. Oh, and I checked our barrel. Right now we are in the 30s. So it's like, I think 30.2 here or something like that, which is odd. I don't usually see it that high, but. And let's, let's see what our RPM is. Um, RPM, we're at 600 right there. So yeah, we definitely shouldn't be this low. So I'm gonna get a new mass airflow sensor, I'm gonna put it in, and then we'll go from there. So guys, I got a door last mass airflow sensor. I ordered a Tachi OEM one, but it was a completely different style than what was supposed to be on here. So these look about the same. Okay guys, so we'll go under functional tests we got the new mass airflow sensor in there. We're going to reset our keep alive memory. We'll press OK. Hopefully this mass airflow sensor works. There we go. Keep alive memory was reset. Let's just cycle the key just in case. Let's go to data. Continue. Let's go to drivability. Look at the RPM. Look at our mass airflow sensor. We'll bring up our short term and our long term. Short term. Long term. You can see our RPMs coming down. Our mass airflow sensor looks like it's reading higher than it was. And we have no loads on. That's another thing. It got to be no loads. So there you can see we're already correcting. And look at that, it's at negative one on one bank and one on the other. Look at that, we're at 5.33 grams per second, 700 RPMs. <laughs> And our fuel trims are dead on. Let's see what's our RPM? Look at that. Let's see what our barrow is at. Our barrow is at 26.8, so that's going to have to update when we drive it. I'm going to shut it off here real quick because I got to clean some stuff up. We'll save this and we'll see what it ends up being later. So guys, I just got back from a test drive and we did pretty good. Let's see. The whole time we were driving, uh, it stayed pretty consistent. Let's see. We are pretty much at like one or zero the whole time. Like there's a few times where like I let off the gas or hit the gas that it went up, but I think it's still learning. So I'm going to shut this off and we'll check it tomorrow and then we'll compare our map sensor readings and see if our map changed but like our mass airflow sensor is a lot better now at idle still seems like it might be a little low but our fuel trims are dead on see that short term long term zero percent pretty much
so I'm going to uh so shut it off. We'll use the e-scan tomorrow. We'll do our volumetric efficiency and we'll graph our fuel trims again. Okay guys, so we got the new mass airflow sensor in and you can see it's over reporting in the higher RPMs here. See where we got like a negative seven. Like now these numbers are slowly changing as I'm go driving. Cause up here we had, uh, like you see there's a negative five then there's a five, but when I'm up here, it slowly starts changing closer to zero. So I wonder if I should let this go. Same with when I did the volumetric efficiency, it's over reporting here. You can see like once you get up here, it starts over reporting. Like this one wasn't as bad as this one. So I'm just wondering if I should let it go and let's see if we can do this. I'm just wondering if I should just let it go and just see what happens. Because I was talking to my friend and he's just like if you get an OEM one he's like it could just be lean on the top end and then you're back to where you were like I'd rather be rich up here than be lean so I think I'm just going to leave it here for now and see what happens like I'm sure she'll bring the car back in for an oil change and if she does then we'll address it I'll take it for a test drive see if it's smoothed out but we got a brand new motor so the motor ain't broke in yet possibly so our volumetric efficiency might be slightly lower I don't know what the difference is but if the rings aren't completely seated yet because we only got less than 100 miles on here so who knows like who knows like uh, what the efficiency of the motor is when it's brand new I don't know, maybe somebody can comment and explain that, but it was never covered in any of the classes I went to. But let's let's go back and look at our graph and look at our map sensor voltage that it shows. Okay, map ain't picked. Let's see. There we go. Graph. We'll put our oh, maps up here at the top. So we are at 10.34 or so. And if you look down here, we're at 19.5. So our map did change with our mass airflow. Now, let me show you something that'll really screw people up. Let me bring this up. Let's see. Pro demand. Let's see. Okay, so I have the truck loaded right here. And I loaded it by VIN. So if we type in map sensor, which this truck doesn't have. Let's see. I may have to log in again. our truck again mm -hmm. so watch this this will really screw people up because it kind of screwed me up so if we type in map sensor okay so we get all our stuff right here look at this remove and replace okay you go under here it says map sensors grayed out which happens a lot even though if it has it so we scroll down through here and I don't think it really shows you a map sensor under remove and replace I think it talks about a Mustang in here with a map sensor for a 4.6. Yeah, I think it's somewhere in there it says about a Mustang. But what I wanted to really show you guys was if we go under parts and labor right here, look at this manifold absolute pressure sensor. Remove and replace. 0.6 hours and my friend said well maybe they're confused it with the mass airflow sensor well the mass airflow sensor says 0.8 hours and then if you go under like OEM testing it talks about testing a T-map map and T-map sensor 
And I think if you scroll down, like it, well, it talks about like what pins to test on what vehicles right here for the T map. But as far as I know, this doesn't even have a T map. And top repairs replace manifold absolute pressure sensor. Clean manifold absolute pressure sensor. So how are they having top repairs on this? And like you go into real fixes, like there's clean codes here, clean manifold absolute pressure sensor, but it doesn't have one. I just wanted to put that in there. So I hope you guys like this. Um, and like if I go back to the sharpshooter, you can see like in your normal driving, these fuel turns are pretty dead on. So I'll probably do a follow-up video later. See you guys later. Okay guys, so I took it for another test drive. I'm probably going to give it back to the customer. Still not setting the readiness monitors. Let's see, we go under mode 6. We'll read this all once. And yeah, it's still not doing the heater, so I don't know if there's something causing it, like if they're running, if they're going too slow or something. But it doesn't even look like it's doing any tests. Even the catalyst hasn't run. So I'm going to give it back to them and see if it sets, let them drive it around. And if it comes back, I'll, uh, I'll see... If everything's fixed, then I'll do an update video. Also, I used a sharpshooter today and just drove around. Just cruising. Look at that. Fuel trims are, like, pretty good. So I think we're going to be okay. It's still learning. See you later.